I'm sitting here on my boat in the marina, just taking a break because it's a very hot day today. But luckily, I have got my bimini top over top of me to help shade me from the sun. And believe me, sometimes shade is a really, really good thing. Hi, I'm Wayne the Boat Guy, and today I'm going to talk to you all about bimini tops. But I'm a really big fan of bimini tops. However, they're not for everyone and they're not for every situation. So before you go to buy a bimini top or want to put one on your boat, think about a few important things first and I'm going to go over those things. If you have any interesting stories regarding your bimini tops with your boats, please share them in the comments below. I do read all of the comments that are posted on these videos. Bimini tops are actually named for an island in the Bahamas called Bimini. Who knew? I had to look that up because I always wondered. I always thought it might be related to that somehow. I guess the fishermen from that island must have put canvas tops over top of their boats a long time ago and that's how people started doing Bimini tops. But I don't know. That's just my theory. But it is named for the Bimini Island in the Bahamas. There's a lot of good things about Bimini tops. But here are situations where you may not want to have a bimini top, or you may need to stow your bimini top and not have it out. For example, if you do a lot of fishing, when you're fishing, a bimini top just gets in the way. These rails right here, and this canvas top over top of your head, they do not make it easy for casting or trying to reel things in. If you're having to move around your boat to chase after something, this is a whole lot of obstructions in your way. So if you like to fish from your boat, a bimini top is really not a great idea. Many of the boats here at my marina that are fishing boats have a hard top. The other times where a bimini top is not very useful or practical is if you travel at high rates of speeds. If you're going above 30 miles an hour, you should not have your bimini top out. So what some people do who like to travel very fast is they have to keep their bimini top stowed away while they're running. And then whenever they get to a place, if they want to sit around, they bring it out for shade just during that time, which is great. But they have to remember to stow that bimini top before they start uh, traveling really fast going back home or if there's a lot of wind. Because if there are wind speeds above 30 miles an hour, you should not have your bimini top out. And so for there to be wind speeds above 30 miles an hour, well, if you're going 20 miles an hour into a wind that's 10 miles an hour, that's 30 miles an hour right there to buy the right bimini top for your boat. Essentially, what you need to be able to do is get a bimini top that's long enough to cover the area that you want to cover in your cockpit. So, for example, in this particular boat, the bimini top goes near the top edge of the windshield and it goes over top of the back of the back seat. So with a bimini top, obviously you want to have it be the appropriate length so that it doesn't extend too far over your windscreen, your windshield, and it doesn't extend too far back on your boat, but it covers the area that you'd like it to cover. Then the other important measurement is the width. Now these usually have aluminum poles and they are a little bit flexible. So a lot of times the width is not by a specific inch. So it might say 68 to 72 inches, meaning that those can bend and flex a little bit and be used for any boat that's approximately 68 to 72 inches wide. So the width is important, and that's where you measure from the top edge of your gunnels across your boat. And then the other important thing is the height of the bimini top. And this is where it's interesting because you have to measure from the top edge of your rail or your gunnel to above head height if you want to be able to stand up underneath of your bimini top. So if I were to buy a bimini top for this little 12 foot V hull boat, I could do that. And it's just, you have to do it a little bit differently than you would with a larger boat. So for example, the, if I mounted it to the top rail, the top rail on this is rounded. Now the rounded mounts, you have to buy them separately with the round base on them or the curved, I guess the concave base. You have to buy them separately and they probably don't match the exact diameter of this but they would certainly mount on here better than a flat bottom, which would only have basically one spot where it would be resting on this. And if you've got a round bottom one, it's got two spots, if that makes any sense. At the very least, it would have two spots. So it's either gonna be 
Oh, unless it's, I guess, too slight of a circle. You know what I'm saying, though. It should work better. The other option is where you mount down to the side here, but then you'd have to come out and up. So if we were to get one for this 12 foot boat, the first thing you do is you measure the width at the widest part of the boat. And this is just for illustrative purposes and I apologize to my metric friends, I'm doing all this in standard. So this one is 53 inches. And here where the oar holders are is 52, 52. So at its widest part, this is 53. And back here it tapers back to 50. So it's about 50 to 53 inches. So if your bases were here and here, they wouldn't necessarily be 53 inches. They would be probably 52 and 52 if you had one which had two mounting points. So 52 inches, 53. Once again, these aluminum posts can move just a little bit. So 52, 53 wide. And then our length, well, this is only a 12 foot boat. And if I wanted one to cover me from back there and give me enough shade coming from the front, I need one that's only 60 inches long. I wouldn't want one much longer than that because if I got one that was like 72 inches long, which is six feet, that's, uh, that's almost, you know, <laughs> almost looks like the length of the boat. So in a small boat like this, you wouldn't want to have a bimini top be able to be suitable for if you were completely standing up in the boat because this boat is only about one foot high right here. So I'd need an additional five foot tall bimini top. And that would look pretty ridiculous on a tiny boat like this. So typically what people do is if they do want to make a roof for a boat like this is they make a roof that's suitable for whenever they're sitting in the boat. So all I need to be able to do is measure from when I'm sitting in the boat to clear my head. So we know our width, which is about 52 inches wide. We know our length, which is somewhere between 60 inches and 72 inches. And it only needs to be this tall. So the way I would measure this is if I'm sitting on this seat, I measure from this seat to the top of my head, right? Now, if you measure from the seat to the top of your head, that gives you a measurement right here of, in, the, in this particular case, we're looking at about 40 inches. Then I subtract this little bit right here from the seat up to the top, which is about six inches. But at some point in time, what if I were to mount a seat here? So we want to be able to have that be high enough as well. If from the seat to the top of my head, if we go 48 inches, that's more than enough. That gives me enough clearance where if I put a seat on here, if I go to stand up and move around a little bit. So 48 inches would be the ideal height. And that gives me a roof that's about here. Allows me to move around underneath of it. And we'd have a nice little roof for our small boat here. Hey, if you're liking this video so far, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Thank you very much. How bimini tops typically mount is if you buy a brand new bimini top kit, it comes with mounting hardware and has these bases that you just screw down to the gunnel. And it comes with instructions for how you attach those bases. And typically they come in a certain number of bows. And so you have to mount those bases and then you mount the brackets where the straps hook. So basically you have a couple of points where the aluminum bows anchor to the gunnels, and then you have points farther out for where the straps connect. It's quite simple to be able to install one if you take your time, and especially if you have an assistant to help you as you're measuring things out and laying, laying it out to start installing the bimini top. The brackets that come with most bimini tops are flat on the bottom. And so therefore, if you have a very small boat, which you know doesn't have a nice big flat gunnel like this boat has, and actually has uh, round portions, actually like this bracket here is mounted to a round portion, you can buy round based brackets to be able to fit around hardware like this. Or if you're putting it on like a small aluminum boat where it's curved on the top edge of the boat, you can get curved brackets to mount to that top edge. You can also get 
flat brackets that mount on the outside edge of the boat that have a 90 degree angle for your bimini posts to be able to mount to. So when we got our first boat, it had previously been used for fishing. And so it had no seating on board and it had no bimini top. The guy had it all wide open for fishing. And when we purchased it, we installed some seats because we weren't going to be fishing and we installed a bimini top. So one of the things that I had to do was I had to find out what size bimini top and what kind of bimini top to get for the boat. And I had no frame of reference for that. And my boat was a very inexpensive old boat. I've made some videos about that boat. I just wanted something really cheap that I could just bolt onto the boat to have a cover. So what I did with our boat is I stood on the deck of the boat and I held a tape measure on the gunnel and I measured above my head and that measurement I knew would be my clearance that I needed to be able to have a bimini top that I could walk under. Now, as you can see, that particular boat, when the bimini top was on it, it looked a little bit awkward, I think, because the bimini top sat up quite high, but that allowed me to have the bimini top opened up, providing me shade while I was operating the boat and moving around the boat without running into the top. The bimini top that I bought for our first 19 foot boat literally only cost me about $100. I bought pretty much the cheapest one I could find. It may have been the absolute cheapest one I could find because I, once again, was new to boating and I just wanted to try it out and see what it was like. That bimini top served us fine for the two years that we had the bimini top installed on that boat. When I sold the boat, the bimini top was still in perfect working order. The canvas was fine. It had faded, faded very quickly. It was a medium gray color and it quickly faded to a very, very light gray color. Um, but I, I don't, didn't care what color the, the canvas was. Matter of fact, buying a gray one was actually cheaper than buying a red one, which is what I wanted to buy for that boat. But I was trying to buy a bimini top as cheaply as I could and it worked just fine for our purposes. Here's a couple of tips for bimini tops that you may not know about. One of the first things is that whenever you are opening up your bimini top and connecting your straps, you need to make sure you twist the strap before you clip it on. And the reason to do this is because if you don't do that and that strap is straight, that will vibrate and it can cause a whistle. And it's kind of a loud whistle. The first time it happened to me, I heard this thing going <laughs> And it got louder and louder and I couldn't figure out what it was. And it was actually the strap whistling. If your bimini top came with a cover like mine did for this boat, try to cover it whenever you can. That keeps insects from making homes underneath of the uh, inside of the bimini top, keeps water from collecting inside of the folds of the bimini top. And once again, keeps the sun off the bimini top. So it helps that canvas last even longer. Also, when your bimini top has gotten wet, you should let it dry out. So another tip is like if you're out and it starts raining and you come back to the marina, leave your bimini top open until it gets a chance to dry out. Because if you quickly roll it up and then put the cover on there and it sits like that for a week or two, it could get mildewy and start to stink and have other kinds of issues like rot if it's been sitting there wet. So you wanna be able to allow it to dry out if it does get wet. Now, if you're trailering your boat home, obviously you want to stow your bimini top. So you want to close your bimini top back up again and put the cover on it or wrap straps around it and have it tight and secure for going down the highway because as I mentioned earlier, you don't want your bimini top open at speeds above 30 miles an hour. But if it gets wet on the way home or it's gotten wet while you're boating, once you get home and you get a chance, open it back up again so that it gets a chance to dry out before you stow it away. Because if it's a few weeks before you're going back out with your boat again, that could be holding a lot of moisture over those couple of weeks time if you haven't let it dry out. Another tip is remove your bimini top in the off season. And the reason to do that is that helps the bimini top last a lot longer and you're not having wind and everything like that being weighing down on these bimini top braces. It's not made to hold any weight at all. It's just meant to support this canvas cover. So if you cover your boat and you're using any kind of cover mechanism like I use with mine, I have a nice big wooden rig that I built last year that I cover my boat with. I have my bimini top completely removed so it is out of the way and it doesn't get damaged by the snow 
or anything happening in the winter and it's not in my way as I'm trying to cover my boat. And then periodically, like with everything else, check the hardware. Make sure that none of the brackets are loose or damaged. Make sure everything's connections and stuff like that are secure. So I hope you got a better understanding of Bimini Tops from this video. Thank you so much for watching. Here's a video pick just for you and a playlist of videos similar to this one. You stay safe out there in the water. I'm going to just sit here and have a cool drink in the shade, I think.